If you have experimented with, you know, trying to create that vibrato, you may hear me do it sometimes. Uh, or a bend. So basically there's three different types of vibratos. Uh, there's the, there's the slide across the frets. There's the bend with one finger. And then there's the bend fingers or with one or more fingers it might be with three fingers or four fingers uh, because you might find out in the beginning that's a little tough to actually bend that string or shake the string uh, by yourself or on your own with your own finger strength so like i said three main ways to create a vibrato those are the three ways slide bend and bend single bend all right you can actually shake the bass right you can shake the bass. I don't know if you've seen people do that before. And you'll get this like effect, this weird, you know, type of effect, this bending, bowing, woo, 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 effect when you're shaking the bass back and forth, or you're bending the neck. And it's usually happening on a open string. That's very dangerous to do if you do it too much, if you apply too much pressure to the neck. So I really don't recommend doing that. I only do it with harmonics, with things like that, that are open strings. Um, yeah, pretty cool trick. Uh, just have to be careful about how much force you put to it. So it's really like almost like you're going to a, I don't know if you've ever been to a chiropractor and they kind of, they crack your back or your side and they push one of your, you know, this part of your body this way and then push the other part of your body that way. So it's the same same movement. So that's why it's so dangerous because you don't want to crack your base. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to do that. So you're bending this, pushing this part and bending this part of the neck. Or even better with a higher string. At the same time. So I guess four or five different ways to actually have a vibrato, but the main ways is that shake and that bend. Okay, so you really have to be able to have that finger strength, like I tell you guys before. So working on dexterity exercises, strength exercises, uh, to be able to build that strength up, that muscle memory, uh, to be able to have your strings bend in a way that you can control them. So. You see, there was two different ways. I did it with a single finger and three fingers. Okay, so what I mean by three fingers, you take whatever note you're bending, uh, say for instance, it's, it's this E. All right, my third finger is gonna hit that E, but my second and first finger are gonna be behind that. Okay, so not, a, not, a, not above it, not my fourth finger. So the fingers behind that note in a lower register, down in pitch, behind that note, because it doesn't affect the note. It doesn't affect the note, but if I do, Obviously, it's going to affect the note. All right, so behind the note, grab that string, both fingers on the string, and bend it up and down. And be sure not to create a whole step of a tone. So you don't want to go, that's too much of a bend. So you really want like right in between. You want a half step, maybe a, a half of a half step, a couple cents of a step back and forth slowly okay so a lot of people that i see have a have trouble you know especially beginners or you know people that have been playing for a long time create a habit and their vibrato is just way too fast uh, i know a couple of pay players now when they do a vibrato i mean they, they're great players but the vibrato just sounds so fast and so uncontrolled it, it just kind of messes up the whole vibe right so you want to make sure you have a nice nice and controlled as slow as you possibly can you might want to try it fast just for an exercise sake, but up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Strength wise, the bend is more difficult to do. Technique and skill wise, the slide between two frets is a little bit more difficult to do because you really have to be, ha you really have to have control over your hand to not go all over the place. 
you'll see me do two different kinds. Practicing them separately would definitely help, you know, in the long run. Just one note, a scale, exercise, doesn't matter. Try to do that at the end of a scale exercise or, uh, over, or an arpeggio or whatever exercise you're doing at the time. So play every single note the right way. When it gets to that last note, bend that last note, right? Take the rest of your fingers. Even though your fourth finger is playing that last note, you can take all three of the other fingers and help that last note. So what you're doing, you're just you're kind of putting your fingers beneath the string, kind of under the string instead of on top of the string. So, so it's a slightly different angle that you're pressing the strings down. Even the string or even the note that you're pressing down, that the actual note is coming out. So the note, that note there that you're pressing down to try to bend, even that when you have to approach a little bit differently, you have to come kind of come from the bottom, come below it and bend it up. Okay, versus coming on the top and trying to do it. I, mean, I don't really have an exercise for this other than just doing it. One note at a time because that's really all you can do. Yeah, all, all that you can do really. Uh, the hardest one or the toughest one as far as strength is bending. So I will work on that just a little bit more. Um, the other one, you have to have a little bit more control going from side to side. And it's nothing bigger than a half step. You don't want to. You don't. Want to, you don't want to go outside that half step trill. Too big. Too big of a jump. 